Welcome to the SNS Grills channel. Greg here from Ballistic Barbecue. Today I'm going to be cooking up a beautiful surf and turf for two. We're talking filet mignon and lobster. Let's get going. So for this video, I'm using the Slow and Sear Kamado. Very excited about this cook. I'm going to be cooking up the filet mignon, just a traditional reverse sear. And then we're going to be grilling the lobster over that direct heat. I'm gonna show you how I have this grill set up. Doing this cook today with the slow and sear in place along with the drip and griddle. Of course, with this configuration, there's no need to use the deflector plate or anything. We're not using this as you would a traditional Kamado. Let's get it lit. I have here a charcoal chimney with 25 lit briquettes, and I counted them, 25. Let's kind of make them even here. Now for this cook, I'm going low. I am going to try to maintain a temperature between 200 degrees Fahrenheit and 225. I want to try to keep it in that 200 degree range. I just personally find that I get a much better result as far as the amount of doneness when I go really, really low. So we're going to start out with the upper damper here on number two. I may end up having to lower that. And down here on the bottom damper, oh, that's a little less than a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the temperature. I do not want to overshoot that 225. If I have to, I'll start shutting down dampers and you'll see if I have to do that. So I got lucky. I did not have to make any damper adjustments at all. So again, that bottom damper, a little less than a quarter of an inch open and the top damper is on number two. And I'm right at 200 degrees right now. Let me show you these sticks. So I have here two very, very thick filet mignon and these are right around 10 ounces a piece. One's a little bit larger than the other, but they're right around 10 ounces. Yesterday, I seasoned both steaks with salt and placed them in the refrigerator overnight, unwrapped. I will be probing each of these steaks and I want the probe to be right in the center. So what I'm gonna do is use my thumb to kind of gauge it. And I'm going to go to the center of the side here, if that makes any sense, and just push it in. So the probe tip should be right in the dead center of that cut. So I'll be doing the same thing with this cut, again, right in the dead center, then go to the center of the side, just push it into my thumb tip. The tip will be right in the dead center there. I want some smoke on this cook, so just throw a little piece of hickory down there. So now really all I have to do is monitor temps. So I'm going to monitor both the temperature of the cooker and the meat. If I need to make any pit adjustments, it's just gonna be, you know, bottom or top damper. I'll start out with the bottom. And as far as the meat's concerned, once it hits 80 degrees, I'm going to flip it. When it hits 125 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to pull it, let it rest a little bit, but I don't wanna jump ahead. See you in a bit. We're about 20 minutes in, we just hit 80 degrees. Temperature has been very stable. I haven't had to make any adjustments. Let's go ahead and flip these guys. Looking good. You can see they're getting smoke. All right, next stop, 125 degrees. Once that occurs, we're going to prepare this Kamado for the next stage. See you guys in a bit. All right, we're about 25 minutes in. We just hit that 125 mark. Again, this cooker's been holding very stable. It's right at 205 right now. Let's check it out. Look at that color. It's beautiful. One thing I meant to mention earlier in this video, I forgot to mention it now, is be sure to take the meat out of the refrigerator a good hour or so before you start this cook. Allow it to set in your kitchen room temperature. Try to bring that internal temperature up. 
So what I'm going to do now is let these steaks rest. In the meantime, I'm going to prep a charcoal chimney full of charcoal so we can start the searing process, the fun part. Okay, my chimney of charcoal is almost ready. I'm going to go ahead and prep the steak, prep the lobster. From now on, it's going to go very, very quickly. So steak's all rested. Always want to wipe it off before we sear because, you know, it expels a little bit of juice as it's resting. Smells unbelievable. Nice smoky smell. Now I'm just going to brush on a little olive oil. So the steak's already been salted. We're just going to add some nice fresh ground pepper. Don't worry too much about the sides. I'll roll it in the stuff that spilled. All right. So here's the lobster. Now this was one lobster tail that was cut in half. And this is very fresh lobster. It was literally swimming yesterday. I personally think it's a shame to drown this flavor, this rich flavor with a bunch of garlic and everything. So I'm just hitting it with some virgin olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, squeeze a fresh lime, squeeze a fresh lemon. Now let's cook. I'm going to add a full chimney of lit charcoal. Even them out a little bit. The bottom damper is fully open. The upper damper is fully open, and I'm only going to use that mainly during the lobster cook if I have to temper the heat down a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is work on the out on the uh, edges of the steaks here. As far as the edges are concerned, I don't know, 30, 45 seconds each side. Now the main surface of the steak, we're gonna do probably about a minute on each side. I'm just trying to move them around a little bit, get them to the hotter parts of the grate. Once the steak touches the grate, it actually cools the metal here. All right, steaks are done. Now we're going to put those lobster tails on and if I shut the lid, it'll be during the lobster cook. Now, if you don't want the lobster tail to curl, you can actually run a skewer through the meat and it'll keep it straight. But I actually want it to curl for this cook. I think it'll be a kind of a neat presentation. We're going to go about five minutes or so on the meat side down. Now I'm going to go ahead and close the lid. It's starting to sizzle pretty good, just to bring that temperature down a tad. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull the lid damper down to about number two. All right, we're about four minutes, 45 seconds in. Flip them. I just want to pull this guy a little closer. Seems like a little hotter side over there. Baste this with some butter. Close the lid. Now when we're playing with the heat like this, when we're using the lid to really bring the grilling temperature down, make sure you burp the lid. In other words, open it up just to crack. Let the fresh air get in there before you fully open it. So we're gonna allow this to cook another four minutes or so. All right, four minutes has passed. Mm -hmm. 
Looks good. Let me get this plated up and we'll give it a try. And here we are all plated up. Now for video purposes, obviously it's all on one plate, but we all know that this is a meal meant for two. Let's give this a try and I don't know where to start. Let's start out with a steak. Try to be civilized here. But of course I'm using my hands to show you. <laughs> there you go. Pretty nice, pretty nice medium rare right there. I'm happy with that. Let's try this lobster. I use my hands when I eat lobster. You see, very moist. Now this is melted unsalted butter. I have that is delicious, extremely moist, very tender, very sweet. And I use unsalted butter just because of, you know, I season it with that, that salt. That's delicious. And I even forgot to put on a little lemon and lime. Very, very moist. Mm. Honestly, the lobster's so good, it really doesn't need that lime, but I think the lime makes it better. That, that nice fresh citrus pop. Try the steak. Just a gorgeous color. And I'm really getting that, that hickory, that hickory smoke smell. Cheers. <laughs> so good. I'm actually getting a beautiful smoky flavor out of this. Oh. I'm a happy camper right now. Filet mignon and lobster for lunch. My wife is going to get the same, so she's going to be happy. This has been a great cook. I cannot tell you how much I'm digging on this Kamado. I've done, this is my fourth cook I've done on it, and it has never ceased to amaze me. The, uh, it's a whole different experience using a Kamado with that slow and sear in place. One thing I've noticed is you actually get a lot more smoke than you'd get it just as a traditional Kamado. I mean, you get nice smoke rings and that's something that your traditional Kamado kind of lacks. So very happy with this. Anyway, guys, thanks for stopping by. If you're not subscribed, please do make sure you ring that notification bell. Thumb it up if you like it. And I hope you did. Remember, two zones are better than one. And that's the truth. See you on the next video. Cheers.